Hey everybody, Theta here, back in with the Stone Face Reactions. We got lessons again. I think we're going to be saying that every episode because I'm not doing any <laughs> solo. Uh, Happy to be here. Yeah. Well, thoughts on last episode? Anything we want to carry over, think about into episode four? What are we at? Four? The penultimate yeah, episode of uh, Mercury yeah. Zero? Uh, things are heating up. Uh, basically, uh, now we know that there's two parts of the head to the uh, to the Birdman, and uh, the the anti unification forces and the UN forces are fighting to get the technology, whatever it might be. And there seems to be, which has been hinted before, now clearly been told that if this thing wakes up, everybody's screwed. How exactly we don't know, but you know, it's according to, to prophecy. Disappeared. Well, yeah. actually, according to a flash something that was about to call a flashback but it's not flashback um a vision sarah well yeah sarah's vision according to sarah's vision which is literally if you think about it not as bad as reality we saw the birdman attacking the island but the birdman's attack on the island which is then also being attacked by valkyrie is nowhere near as bad as the fight we just got last episode in fact yeah. less stuff is on fire in that uh in that vision than is actually on fire. I guess my only Hopefully other thought done. on the uh, the matter is they have the other half of the Birdman in the aircraft carrier whose name is escaping me. I know it starts with an A, but... Asuka, Asuka 2. Yeah. Oh, is it 2? I thought it was just Asuka. Yeah. Well, either way. No. It's in the aircraft carrier. It doesn't look like Didi has uh, gotten to it because he still seems to be in the fight with Roy as far as I know which means that even if um, her name Nora, I want to uh, call her yeah. by her last name, but they're referring to her by her first name in the show, so I'm going to say that. It seems like even if Nora gets the head, then it's not going to matter because it'll be both sides have one part of a relic. In which case, how is the Birdman going to get put together? Also, I think it's more of a, you know, they keep... It's again allegory. They keep fighting over this stuff, and they're going to keep trying to get it together either way, and thus getting everybody in the middle killed and dest and destroying everything in the process. Well, so maybe you know, yeah. Well, well, that means that if they get the head, then the UN now has to send an attack against them to take take it while trying to prevent the other side from completing it. So it's going to be you know. Well, I guess in my head, I'm trying to think of how is this going to come to an end, right? I'm assuming that we have to stop the war somehow. And I'm assuming that the Birdman is going to come to fruition, right? Like the vision says, that they're not going to be able to stop that. And that's going to be the unifying factor or something. I don't know. I'm just trying to think how did this end? And I just don't foresee it ending. In, but knowing that it has to, because there's only one episode left. Yeah. That or would be a very unsatisfying and that's when the war ended, you know? Or we won't even get that at all. It'll just say, that's the end of the story of Shin and Sarah. Like, I guess that was one thought I had that I didn't uh, put into the uh, the final thoughts there. Um, when I was making the concept board, my thought was, okay, I'll put a 2008 on here, because that's when this happens in World. Because if we get into the uh, the Macross episodes, and they're not so far into the future, it's no. entirely possible that these characters could still be alive in the background somewhere. And then we got into the war, and then the war came to mind, and it's like, oh, okay, these characters might not survive this show. So, yeah, I might be much. I might be putting the classic red X's over some of those faces on that there board. All right. Any other uh, any other thoughts about last time or expectations for this time? I think what we're gonna expect is more the same. You know, I mean, the story basically is ramping up: more violence, more fighting, more interpersonal conflict. Right? Everybody's gonna try to do their own thing, you know. But we are seeing that Chin is changing his mind. He's now adopting and trying to protect this stuff, right? Independent of what the UN wants or anything like that. So he's he seems to be taking this on board, right? Uh, Oh, like unfortunately, now that his head. thing has crashed. Yeah. <laughs> now there's no more resources to do anything. Yeah. But, you know, the fact that he defended it, not because it, he was given orders to do so, but because Mao told her, you know, this is my treasure, please protect it. And he, you know, went out of his way to do it. 
So he clearly has grown attached to these people, even as they're being massacred in this crossfire of the war. Yeah. Yeah, it's just an unfortunate uh, series of events that it tracks all the way back to him. If he hadn't crash landed, or I guess drifted, he yeah. didn't crash land. He drifted here when he uh, crashed into the water or whatever. If he hadn't come here, none of this would have happened. One assumes. No, I think they were already looking for the underwater thing. So either well, way. it's his presence here which attracts everybody else. I yeah. think that if he had shown up, this is the classic Indiana Jones is pointless to the Indiana Jones movies things, right? That nothing he does matters in his own movies. Everything will play out exactly as they play out without him in them. If he didn't, if Shin didn't show up on the island, it seems to me that the anti UN forces would have found everything. Because they're literally in a submarine in the area with little, you know, uh, excursion modules looking at stuff. So they would have just found everything, put it together themselves. Okay, I see what you're saying. That the bird man would have woken up and then attacked the island. It is an Indiana Jones moment. <laughs> yeah. The, the Nazis found the Ark if Indy was there or wasn't there. Mm -hmm. Alright. Well, that's all the thoughts I have. I'm responding to your thoughts now and I think that's it. Yep. So, uh, I think we just go on and get into it. Let's Before it. we get started, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and comment down below to feed that algorithm. On top of all that, if you want to watch more shows like this, unfiltered, uncensored, and uncut, as well as some early access stuff, you can check it out on, over at the Patreon. Just $5 a month, but hey, no pressure. It's all to support the channel, just a little bit extra. This place we've only seen in the flashback before. <laughs> to be fair, I think if they're already beating the hostage, we're well past Geneva Conventions. Of course, I've been hearing recently the Geneva suggestions. Well, he's showing that they're the bad guys, you know. At least she is, anyway. Okay, I know it's hard to portray yourself as a good guy when you're surrounded by people that are smiling at you getting beaten. Wait, is she the UN? No. Why is she said under the name of the UN? Yeah, she's the enemy. She's she is accusing them. Well, she got the, the booby discretion shot, you know, not, not Sarah, though. Well, I guess one is supposed to be portrayed as innocent, and we're in the middle of the least innocent scene possible. Yeah. Plus, she already got her pseudo-sexual scene after grabbing that one guy's <laughs> balls. Well, whole conversation seemed to be pointless, really. I mean, transform. We know your thing has arms. Yeah. Also, just a quick conceptual moment. How the fuck did you get away from this guy to refuel anyway? You were fighting him face to face last we saw.
Because you were saying before, now we find out who's better. Literally, he just, Didi just let this guy go, refuel, possibly rear. <laughs> Okay, the good doctor was part of the anti-UN then. パスポートはかせ。さら、ノーム大きくなったね。先生、あなたがなぜ半島語同盟なんかに。誰が喋って言ってた。ノーラ対乱暴はやめたまえ。彼女たちの拘束を解いてやるのだ。I guess he's ahead on a mission, then. I know I was making all these Indiana Jones jokes before, but this really feels like that, you know, when the scientist shows up and he's with the Nazis. I gotta say, Lessons, I'm real eager to find out how this has nothing to do with Macross in the future. <laughs> I feel like every time Mayan shows up in the subtitles, there needs to be an asterisk. Yeah. Traditional Mayan paintings. Asterisk, not those kind of Mayans. Yeah. This does remind me deeply of Nadia, though. Specifically, uh, Red Noah. Also, I feel like your comment about finding out which one of those is better was a bit disingenuous, since we already yeah. know that Roy is in the next show. <laughs> yeah. Or a future show. I mean, true. Also, it's, it's interesting that Sarah was the one that broke the rules, and that's why she's so, you know, you know. Well, if she knows about the whole, the head and body come closer together, then she would be vehemently against breaking any yeah. more rules. And a bit harsher now against the whole do you want to break the rules or do you want to care about your health thing from the blood taking uh, scene. Yeah. Oh, that was a real guilt ridden um, POV shot. I don't know what we call a reverse Dutch angle. That was the correct response, by the way. Not weird dude with a knife, like, I don't know what to do with all these floating rocks. Nor is, <laughs> eh, get away. Except for the part where you can transform and we know that your thing's legs have uh, engines in them too. Yeah. That looked like a stone missile. Yeah, pretty much.
Thank God we've already covered how all of our people are inept. I think it's Roy. Yep. I thought he was still in a fight with D. What the hell? How's he no, keep I think getting he, away? He, he, he got shot down. Remember, his engine got hit. Oh, I assumed he was still in like a high stakes maneuver or something up there. Star Wars callbacks. Fifty cal? Probably. Dude, what are you gonna do? Protect her with her body? It very much looked like a, this is gonna suck, was etched on his yeah. face. He's always getting shut down, and he's always getting banged up. It's fine. You got saved by the Baldur's Gate 3 bubble. Uh -huh. Ow. Again, banged up. なぜ私を助けた。なぜ Tears in the rain. Well, I will say that I hope Macross has a pretty strong romance arc going on because it's going to have to beat these two. And despite everything I've said, I'm pretty invested. And the only hope I have is to think that they might be alive in the background of the story. CNAND. <laughs> and it really was none of his business. None of your. ベッドの下にゴキブリが逃げたら、ベッドを壊せばいい。そんなことをしたらハスフォードが何を言うかわかりませんよ。石を浮かせるような連中だぞ。ゴキブリと同じだ。それくらいじゃくたばらないってことです
for people that were on the uh, the edge about getting like a blood transfusion thing before, they are surprisingly quick to accept surgery. I guess they're saying that the surgery didn't work. And she's alive, but it didn't bring her back. Right, but I just mean if this was a longer series, say, I would expect to see scenes of them, you know, protesting even having a surgery done. Yeah. なんで勉強嫌いなのに大学なんか行ってたのよ。あの時なぜ来てくれなかったの？いきなりだな。あの時だって君はいきなりハスフォード博士に弟子入りするからオックスフォードへ行くって。私が悪いの？いや。I really do feel like we're trying to shoe in all the tropes. Yeah. Like we know that they had some sort of like bad romance or whatever, and now we're like, and I left you at the airport, or you know. <laughs> Uh oh. Highly unconcerned. Remember, she referred to the people as samples. I mean, yeah. And I have. But we're giving that we're giving that glimpse of oh hey she is not entirely a monster and then. No. At best, it makes her self-absorbed. Because all she's doing yeah. in the midst of this war time scenario is focusing on their relationship in the past and asking him why. I literally thought she was going to be dead, though. As per our previous discussion of Roy and not his girlfriend is in the future. Yeah. And of course she just bled, which means something. I'm assuming it means she broke her bond with the Birdman, and now the head got a little bit closer to the... But what does that even mean? We've already moved both pieces. <laughs> both, yeah. both pieces have to move a lot further now if they want to join back. Oh, if her blood gets in the water, it'll attract Kedon, or whatever. Yeah, Remember episode one? Mm-hmm. Of course, now she blames herself for being a kid and manipulated by the professor. Unless she's implying that everyone that's died last episode is itself each an individual rule-breaking infraction. In which case, the head could be moving a lot closer. <laughs> I feel like this has the cadence of you telling me you cheated on a school test and me telling you I once killed a man. Yeah. <laughs> the level like, of infractions here are not the same. Yeah. Really. yeah, I commit an infraction that could end all human life. Uh, I stuff a frog in someone else's bag. Sure, same thing. Uh, that CGI doesn't look great, though. This is so conspicuous, like conspicuous, right? Yeah, I mean, 
But if you tell me that uh, when Roy shows up in the future series, he's got scars down half of his body <laughs> from an uh, explosion he was too close to. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I didn't notice the CES so much because of the fighters and all that makes it cool. But when they use it for like plants and and, and mundane things, it's <laughs> it's kind of dumb. I don't know. I didn't have that much of a problem with it because everything around it was also done in a similar style. Yeah. It's, it'd be different if the two characters were like on it, but it was like literally moving away from them. I have a problem when it's like line barrels of iron, when it's like the mechs are the CGI and it's... I don't know. Like mid-90s animation and CGI com combinations. And he takes advantage of the fact that she can move. Yeah, they switch places. Sorry, there was just an element within me that was like, I hope this is his kiss goodbye, and he just runs off. <laughs> See, for me, she hasn't re-earned her humanity yet. Not for her little, you left me at the airport story. Yeah, true enough. I think they're trying hard to inject humanity into her, mostly. Or at least that she's not as bad as her mentor. They're injecting emotions into her, but they're not emotions I care about. Oh, she's strong, too. She can make rocks float. I don't think a guy is a problem. <laughs> I mean, making guy, uh, rocks fly with your mind and picking somebody all, you know, one-handed is a bit different. I suppose also, to be fair, she lives like in an island culture where things have to be a lot much harder in the day of a day. Oh. Yeah, again, that, you know, technology versus simple life. Granted, we all typically die by the age of 40, but, you know, whatever. それは。幼い頃、父が言っていたわ。昔はマヤンとその群島で最後言葉が違っていた。それが服やラジオが入ってくると、やがて言葉は一つになり。does that imply that when she's singing, she's singing in Kef? しかし本当の一つ名は違う。石も草も山も皆本当の一つ名を持っている。なのに皆その名を忘れ、真実の歌に耳を傾けようともせず。今は一つでいいじゃないか。出ないとこうして君とも話せない。その代わり争いという言葉も入ってきた。島に戦争がやってきた。そして島を出て行った者たちは戻ってこようとしない。たまに戻ってきても島には何もないと言って町に帰ってい
I mean, to be granted, this is an animation telling us this, so anybody who believes this stuff would never see it. It's like a movie about the wonders of, uh... Sorry, I completely forgot where I was going. <laughs> I mean, yeah, if you have to watch this animation, you wouldn't believe in this, right? It's the contradiction of that was appealing to nature when you're a technological-based culture. I was going to say, it's a, like making a movie about the wonders of the Amish. You're going to miss your target audience. Well, I guess they brought her back to the island pretty quick, too. Oh, they're in the aircraft carrier. Oh, the texture of the ground around them made me think it was dirt. Even though we were zooming in on the aircraft carrier, I just thought... No, I don't know. There's also an element of Iron Giant going on. You know how the nuts and bolts rolled back to his body to put him back together again? Well, head and body right here. Oh, so maybe it's completely unconnected to her singing. It was just the Birdman healing itself. Oh, never mind. They were all singing. Sorry, I completely forgot. Considering what we heard earlier about the fuel or explosive, that's an unfortunate <laughs> turn of phrase. Well, yeah, like we were talking about when the generator came on. I was like, that's just painting a target. When did Avatar come out? Um, I don't know, 2010? So after this. Yeah. I think he's singing to 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 heal his own wounds. Oh, I was waiting for him to pull out a sticky carp earlier in the day. I mean, to be fair, her whole story about everyone leaves the island and never comes back versus he's a person who came from outside the island and hasn't left. Not for lack of trying. Oh, look at that. He didn't even have to show her a stick. Yeah. That he's certainly trying to.
That's how injured she must have been. That they had to sing a song that brought back to life a 10,000 year old dead alien. Just to get her back on her feet. You also have to consider that uh, yeah. firebombing campaigns have been more destructive historically <laughs> than some nuclear blasts. <laughs> Very much feels like the way that typically goes, right? You get your happy mm -hmm. moment in. Oh, Mao was safe. Oh, the two lovebirds have finally figured out that they actually love one another. What can and we then, do to ruin the situation? I mean, they did set it up early. Like, she made the call for the airstrike, and it took a while for the airstrike to get there. Oh, Which yeah, in most yeah. shows, it would have been, it would have been, oh, airstrike, and five seconds later, like, we see the fighters come in and start dropping the bombs, right? So. Yeah, I mean, you pointed it out before, like, when I was like, oh, he didn't give it to Carver's stick. And it's like, yeah, but they did call in a fuel bomb you know it's like yeah we start off of our memory I, th I guess maybe that's what the thing is right they're trying to trick us by introducing this love scene that will make us forget what was said before because she only said it in like one line so maybe it wouldn't stick with you though to be fair most of the people who didn't die in the initial attack last episode aren't on the island anymore. Yeah. But maybe this is one of those rule breaks. <laughs> and we do know I mean, the, we do know that the uh, thing is waking up. Not specifically because they're breaking the rules, but again, they're singing the songs that regenerate. And then you had the entire remaining village singing the song, apparently. Yeah. Which is very reminiscent of me of uh, Godzilla. You know, the two little... Um, what do you call Pygmy girls? I don't know what you call them when they're this big. <laughs> you know, the two little, the two little mini girls that sing the song that bring Mothra back to life. Yeah, I mean, also the final imagery of seeing like the mushroom clouds, right? I mean, we're told these are not nuclear weapons; they're fuel air explosives, which are very powerful. Well, they make, shown... they do the same thing. Fuel air explosives do the same thing because they explode and then they draw in the air, which mm -hmm. they just a mushroom cloud made from a nuclear blast has a higher like atmospheric reach than a yeah. uh, firebomb. But they do the same kind of effect where they suck in all the oxygen to fuel the explosive before releasing a, an explosive outer uh, concussion wave. Yeah, that's what I was so, saying yeah. when uh, before. A lot of people don't seem to recall. And this is actually um, coming to a Gundam comment section where people have been... I've been complaining about uh, war crimes that were being committed in uh, Gundam Seed, specifically hostage-taking during a uh, by soldiers of civilians. And people are like, oh, the U.S. Army did this, or, you know, the use of nuclear bombs, because that's the go-to. That's like the Nazi in the argument. Yeah. <laughs> the dropping of nuclear bombs is like, yeah, but you do know that we dropped, we did a lot of firebombing campaigns too before that, which were yeah. killed more people than the nuclear bombs. You can point to other war crimes. There's one thing the U.S. government has it's war crimes under the belt. I mean, that's also reminiscent of the United States military during the Vietnam War had what's called daisy cutters, which were 10,000 pound bombs dropped from the back of a transport, a C 130 Hercules, and they were designed to just clear. An area for helicopters. Of course, anything that was below that, well, boom, we're gone. Or arc like missions with uh, B 52s, 107 bombs each, which is carve explosive, you know, uh, you know, destruction for like a kilometer or more, you know. So, and God forget, for uh, give, we forget what we did to our own troops with bombings in that same war. 
and Agent Orange. Yeah, well, that's what I'm indicating. Agent Orange was dropped in bombing runs, so... Uh, but yeah, what were we talking about? Uh, well, I mean, we were talking about the last episode fire bombings. of the fire bombings and second to last episode of uh, Zero. And yeah, I mean, like I said, it, 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 this seems to be the rest fight before the final storm. Like they picked up the pace, a lot of duck fights, a lot of things, but also kind of showing that the anti UN side seems to be, I don't know, stronger. I guess they want to show them that they, um, they're a real threat, right? I mean, that's a hard tell. They could be stronger in the region and weaker overall in the world. We have no, I mean, yeah, we have no perspective of what's actually happening beyond this little, this little window that we're getting into the past. Yeah, but I think that they're trying to show them as um, an effective threat. Like right? they can destroy ships, they can get you to the carrier. If not for Roy showing up at the last second with a souped-up machine to drive them off, which right? got for a bit how he's gotten away from Dee Dee twice now off screen. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I guess it's a conceit that they run out of fuel, right? Like, oh, he escaped because he he said earlier, "I'm running out of fuel, so I'm gonna buy you time." Well, no, no. I, I mean, that... like, uh, every time that Nora has gotten into... Well, not every time. Most of the time Nora gets into a fight, she pursues. Like, Shin goes to the ground, she gets on the ground and starts shooting at Shin. Dee Dee just lets get... Uh, let's Roy get injured, or his uh, thing uh, wrecked like the engine goes out or whatever. Ah, fuck it, let him get away. I'll attack him mm -hmm. when he's refueling. Or, you know, <laughs> he lets him just go. He's Roy has yeah. gotten away from DD twice, unexplained. Yeah, it seems more like a sport for him. Like, or he was. I'm gonna. Although last time, yeah, he maybe he, he could be. He could be, uh, yeah. he could be attached, right? Like yeah. the whole trainer uh, student thing. Maybe mm -hmm. it's like ah, I'll make him better. Maybe it's a reverse flash scenario, right? Yeah, I'll make him suffer. I'll make him a better pilot. Yeah, he seems to be instructing him. like, oh, you're getting better, but you're treating this aircraft, you know, roughly, et cetera, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, you know, screw you. I just want to fight. It just seems crazy. It seems uh, the plot armor thing. I think Roy mm -hmm. is only surviving by the fact that he can't die. You're saying he's in a future show, which assumedly comes out before this one does in the real world release timeline. Yeah. Is that Roy is an unkillable character unless they want to do something crazy. You know, like... They kill him, and then they sing him back to life or something. I don't know. Which I expect in this show could have fully happen. I mean, yeah. The whole, you know, alien technology thing that makes rocks fly and all that. Uh, oh, yeah, no, he could give him an infusion with the Islander's blood or whatever. Which entirely seems possible, too. Anything, anything can happen here. It's that yeah. um, we're, we're really getting close to that edge of that when anything's possible, nothing's interesting scenario. Yeah. Where you don't want to go too hard with the mysticism because when the mysticism starts to do anything, well, then what? <laughs> I have no care about anyone dying if I think they can all come back. And thank God they've kept all the, the injuries and the wounds to a realistic level. Like, I'm not even sure how Mao got injured so badly. Like what happened to her? Oh yeah, again? the explosion. It was the explosion of the boat. Oh okay, yeah, yeah, that's right. The torpedo hits the boat, and well, yeah. she doesn't get directly hit, but she, you know, she's caught up in the explosion. Concussive so, yeah. wave, yeah. Yeah. However, at the same time, the person who was actively holding her did not suffer anything from that same blast. So whatever. But the idea yeah. being, the whole surgery didn't call, uh, help her out there to the point where they needed magic, basically, yeah. to to save her life. And then not even the same amount of magic that helped anybody else, which is one person singing. We needed everybody to sing. This is All the things. this is the uh, Pikachu's teardrop saves Ash moment. Yeah. Also, the implication is that her damage is as as much psychological as it is physical. Like oh, that yeah. she's in shock. No, no, like I pointed that out when she was sucking her yeah. thumb. Well, yeah. Well, I mean that that makes sense at least. I don't know if it makes sense because I'm not like a psych major, but you know, I understand it at least. You're, like I was saying in the moment, she's regressing, and we don't know even have any idea how old she is to begin with. So she could just be acting like a kid because she is a kid. 
I think she they're both supposed to be older teenagers, I suppose. Maybe her sister is like 18 or 19. She's like 16, right? Well, we know one is older and the other is a younger sister, but I don't know. We already got child nudity all of a sudden, which I wasn't really appreciating <laughs> in the moment. Not even from an yeah. editing standpoint of, oh, God, I got to edit this. It's, why? Why did you put that on screen? You literally could have had her from here, you know, just on the bottom of the of the screen. Yeah. There was no reason. Mm. Oh, well. Uh, any other thoughts? Well, we're about to uh, see the last episode, and it, it, we don't know. I mean, and we still have the question of how the Birdman actually comes together, right? We saw an image of it growing wings, but I don't know. Is it going to rip through the aircraft carrier? Is it just going to teleport? Well, we don't know. You know Does it not happen? need its head at all? Yeah. <laughs> Why introduce the head if it didn't need it to begin with? Yeah. I mean, they've not done anything yet that they haven't paid off later. And they've reintroduced, or they've, sorry, not reintroduced, they reiterated many times now, we made a pact, and every time we break it, the head and body get closer together. Unless it's going to be something simple, like the body flies to the head. Which I guess is entirely possible now that I said it out loud. I've made <laughs> it real. Uh, well, I mean, that's all my thoughts. Because we're we're at that moment with storytelling where you're just uh, before the end and mm -hmm. the end is going to be anything. The end is going to be the payoff for the entire sit down. It's the, your reward for watching the show so far. So it's very hard to like try and guess from the penultimate episode, what's going yeah. to happen. So not worth it. I find just to sit, you just sit down and watch. It's the best way to go. Yeah. So I think that's it for us here. Uh, been another episode of Macross. I'm Theta. This is uh, Lessons. We will catch you next time. Bye bye. Take care. Bye. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching another Stone Face Reactions. If you have an idea of another video we could go ahead and watch, go ahead and put it in the comments down below and we'll add it to the wheel. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe and let us know what you thought about this video and what parts you liked. And until then, we'll see you next time. Is this too goofy?